Kia ora. Welcome to the 2022 Vintage Pearls Christmas Club reveal. Um, you might be here because you got a Christmas club and you want to see the rest. You might be here because you didn't get any Christmas clubs and you just want to see what's in all of them. Um, you might be here for another reason, that's absolutely fine, welcome. Um, it's uh, nice to know that you're interested and I hope you enjoy what you see. So this year there were three themed clubs. One featured uh, my Tannehill yarn, which is a woolen spun merino four ply, um, which was new to the Vintage Pearls stable this year. It's a beautifully light, warm uh, yarn. The next theme was sock, uh, which I've, I've had sock yarn my entire um, Vintage Pearls career, so almost 15 years now that um, I've had sock yarn. And the third theme was my my superstar sport weight yarn which is a lovely blend of merino polworth and silk so let's start with the tanner hill so the tanner hill theme uh, was based on the works of sarah featon who with along with her husband produced a volume of um a volume about new zealand Flora. Uh, she illustrated everything in the book. Her husband was responsible for most of the copy. Uh, and her works are beautiful. They're beautiful and they capture um, Aotearoa's native flora. So they're, they're very special to us here in New Zealand, I think. Um, and I used one of her images in particular um, as my main image, which is, which is on the screen here, but is this one, as you can see here. And I produced four 50 gram skeins of yarn to go with that image. So these are those four skeins. So hopefully you can see the relationship between these four skeins and this particular image. Uh, I used other imagery um, when thinking about the, uh, the, the theme, but this was the, the particular image that really stood out to me and that I really wanted to, to pull these colors from. And I'll uh, talk to you in a little bit just about what you can do with these skeins. I think there's an awful lot you can do with these, um, but we'll come back to that in a second. So in the box, there was uh, a bookmark and a calendar postcard. Um, the bookmark, if you've had an order from me this year, you've probably already have one because I've been putting them into orders for some time now. Um, obviously, both the bookmark and the calendar um, were made before we lost our beloved Poppy, who's there. Um, but she gave us 16 years of wonderful company. Um, so it's uh, these are the last works that we'll have her on them, I think. But uh, she's very special to us, so it's lovely to see her still there. Um, so yes, this is just a, a cute little bookmark. You'll get one in every box, regardless of theme. You get one of these, and the same with this. I just thought I'd make up a little calendar that you can pop on the fridge or pin to your notice board or might be vaguely useful and it's just got the cats on the other side um, and if you follow me on social media you're probably pretty familiar with these guys by now at the bottom we have Grace she's our oldest cat she's 19 now hoping she'll get to 20 but that's entirely up to her um, our poppy who we just recently lost at 16 uh, we have Rosie and at the top Margot who are sisters um, and we adopted them together uh, and they're only a couple of years old now and Fergus who's our only boy who's about four I think now um, so they're still very young cats um, and, and the two older girls we had for much much longer um, and so again with that so yes every box will get one each of those so I won't discuss those again because they're just in everything so also in the Tannehill box you uh, got a, a sachet of soak this is the fig scent um, I picked the green because I thought it went nicely with the the botanical theme. I do try and match everything in the box to the theme on some level um, so that everything's kind of cohesive. That's something I, I, I get a bit picky about. I'm sure you don't really mind as much as I do, but, but that's something I like to focus on. So if you haven't tried soak, this is a great way to try it. This is like a single serve. Squeeze this into a hand basin of, of, um, of warm water and you can um, soak a, an entire sweater. Um, 
if you are familiar with soak and you maybe already have a bottle on your shelf and you don't really want to break into this um, there's a couple of options for this this is great when you travel so if you're heading away camping or um, a holiday any time of year uh, it's kind of handy to have one of these in your um, like in your toilet bag or something I carry one in my um, my toilet bag um, just in case I want to do a bit of washing on the road and there isn't um, other facilities around you can hand wash in a hand basin anywhere with this it's great for any kind of fabric that you're washing it doesn't have to be just wool um, it's, it's very gentle it's very kind and of course you don't have to worry about rinsing it out so uh, it's really easy to hand wash with this and if you're only washing a few things you can kind of make that sachet do a couple of um, a couple of washes uh, just fold over the top and keep it somewhere safe um, the other option is to pop it in with a gift if, if you've made a project uh, a pattern for someone someone you've got a, a nice little item you want to give them you can add this to the wee package um, so that they have something that's appropriate to wash it with um, it's, it's kind of a nice touch that you've thought about not only giving them the item but some way to care for it so there's lots of options for that if you if you don't want to open it for yourself so we've got our yarn and our soak every package gets some kind of fudge and again i do like to match oops, drop the fudge. i do like to match the fudge to the theme somehow so the botanical one gets three squares of fudge which is the equivalent of a single bar you get the pink which i thought kind of went quite well with the pink yarn which is the chalk coconut flavor you get brown which is a, of course a very botanical earthy color that's the chocolate and you get the soft cream which is vanilla um, which of course i sort of felt went with with the the theme imagery uh, the box is sealed with a little sticker and then you get some extras so in this case they have a, a different image um, of Phaetons um, so you get a few of those um, you get the the stack of cards that I showed you so this this being the main um, image that inspired me but I so I produced these lovely thick cards and these are what I call timeout tags and how I think these can be used it's just a truth that most of us start something and then we falter along the way for one reason or another. Even with the best intentions, there are projects that we begin and then we just can't proceed with them for a while. And what I think is helpful is to I accept that. That is just life, you know, it's not a failing. It's absolutely fine to start something and then think, actually, no, I just I need to pause on this. It's not working for me. You might not be in the emotional space that you can work on it. You might be frustrated by a decision that you have to make and you can't. You might not have the tool that you require. You might not have the skill you require at that point in time and you need to go out and address that before you can continue. So these little timeout tags are designed that you can just acknowledge that this project isn't going to continue with me at the moment and you can pop in the date so that you know when you abandoned it and you can pop down a reason so it might be I'm not sure if it's going to fit I'm not sure if I have enough yarn I'm not sure if I like it and you could just attach this to your project or to the project bag your choice pop it in time out so pop it away and when you come back to it you'll Number one, know how long it's been sitting abandoned. And number two, you'll know the reasons. And it'll really help you just make a decision then whether or not this is something you wish to continue or if it's something that you are going to undo and use the yarn for something else. So you've just got a little pile of these. You can keep them in your stash. And when a project is giving you a bit of a headache, you can go, okay, I'm just going to pop you in timeout, write down the reason, attach this to it. So I gave you um, a little bundle of... Uh, rose gold I call these knitters safety pins um, but you can use them as stitch markers you can use them as row uh, markers so they're great for like in increases or decreases on a sleeve you can mark each one of this to help you count between but they're also ideal for attaching a card to your project so that it doesn't fall off it doesn't get lost and then you know why you've put something in timeout so that's what those are about uh, so you've got a whole stack of those. I can't remember how many. A dozen maybe? Ten? Hmm. I, I also gave you some little stickers. Pretty plain stickers. But these are what I call swatch stickers. And they are designed to... Uh, when you're preparing to knit a project, you often have to knit a couple of swatches. So you know whether or not your gauge is correct. If the yarn and the needle combination that you've chosen gives you the required gauge for the project. 
and it's really useful I found to attach the information for each swatch to the swatch and the quickest dirtiest way I have found is to use a sticker this is just peel off the backing slap it on your swatch okay it is fine for most yarns I wouldn't put it on your most delicate yarn I wouldn't put it on something that was super super fluffy because it might pull off some of the fluff but this is also a swatch so chances are you're actually not going to be using the yarn in this in your project but I haven't ever found and I've, I've left them on um, swatches for over a year I haven't ever found that it has marked the yarn or damaged the yarn in any particular way uh, and it's fairly well stuck what I would say is if you're putting it in a project bag just wrap it up that way so that it can't sort of catch on anything and, and pull off but what it means is that all that information is with your swatch and it's really important to record that information so that you you can always come back to it during your project so it asks you for the date and the pattern name and the yarn that you're using and the needle size those obvious things and then the two key things the gauge that the swatch had before blocking and the gauge that the swatch has after blocking now the after blocking one you can always measure because you've washed your swatch and here it is and you can measure it at any time but that before blocking one you can never measure again once you've washed your swatch so it's really important to record so it's just they're just a, a handy little way of of recording that information you don't have to stick them to your swatch if that sort of freaks you out a bit or you feel like your yarn is a bit sensitive for that pop them on your pattern and somehow or um, if you've got a tail on your swatch you can um, you can attach them across the tail so you could um, put a backing here or just lift the backing and and then stick this down put the backing back in place it doesn't have to be directly on your knitting but as I say I've never had an issue popping it on the knitting it comes off fine it's it's not a problem and again you're not really generally using this yarn um, in your finished project so again not an issue so that's what those are and there's a little stack of I don't know a dozen ten a dozen of those as well so a couple of handy tools for addressing projects um, and there's an information card and again in each box there's an information card about um, the, the theme uh, which gives you a, a very little bit of background but also gives you a link to a little bit more information about um, each of the themes in question just so you know it sort of rounds out uh, rounds out the package a bit because you may never have heard of Sarah Fenton a Fenton sorry she was um, born in Britain but she did spend a, most of her adult life here uh, and she um, her works are in Te Papa so um, she's quite important to us in terms of um, the the artwork that she's done and, and the flora that she's recorded so that's it's lovely to have her work um, and to have her work in our national uh, museum so what can you do with these beauties so much so much so you can use them as they are, all four. So these are, as I said, 50 grams each. So it's about 200, not quite 200 grams per skein, but very close. So you've got almost 800 grams, not grams, 200 meters, almost 800 meters of yarn in total. Okay, so per, per 100 grams, so that and that, 100 grams, is 396 meters. So not quite, just under the 800 meters worth of four ply yarn, which is not an insubstantial amount of yarn. So I've got a selection of patterns that you might be interested in, or they might serve as jumping off points for ideas that you, you might pursue, you might look for other patterns based around that idea. So I've provided a list of links in the description for all themes, so you don't have to um, jot anything down, you can just go and look in, in the description and you'll find all the links to the things that I talk about. So the first pattern I thought that, that might suit this is something called Leftover City, which is a pretty simple cowl pattern. Uh, it's not uh, it's it's not a complex knit. It is a stranded colour work knit, but it's a very straightforward one. Uh, it shouldn't give you any issues with long floats or anything complicated like that, and there are per periods of uh, fabric where there isn't stranding so it's a nice introduction to stranded knitting and I think it would look lovely in these you could just use these four colors you could add more if you wanted to you could just use two of these colors I suspect if you wish to so that's an option um, you can of course make a cow really long for for a nice winter height so it'll be a great way to use up um, the bulk of this if you wish to make it longer so that's 
a kind of a, a start but what I had in mind when I was thinking about this pattern was colour work uh, garment uh, whether it be colour work yoke or colour work scattered uh, across a garment I thought these with a main colour would be ideal and you have enough yarn here that you should be able to uh, you know do a yoke or as I say scatter scatter pattern you know through wrists and hems and, and yoke as long as you add a, a main colour to it um, and definitely enough to do most adult garments in most sizes without too many issues so I've suggested a few the first one is hello from my colors crop it's a long name um, which is this really cute little it's short sleeved but you could make it long sleeve it's a little short sleeved cropped round yoke color work and the color work is sort of scattered in bands and it's it's just it's really sweet it's a really sweet thing and it comes um, in a good range of sizes up to a 60 inch bust um, so hopefully that's a reasonable range of sizes for most people and this is enough to do the color work bits in between your main color uh, for all of those sizes I believe so you can team this with well you can do the classic you could team it with Nadara and have you know, sort of a, a kind of quite classic soft keeping in with the sort of botanical theme you've got this slightly beigey stony color with the greens and the pinks maybe you really like kind of pinks and and green is a wonderful um, accent to pink of course because it's complementary you could stick with the pink theme add in Bunton Hill which is a very very soft pink so now you've got a mostly pink cardigan with the little bits of green lovely again really classic um, if, if you if you enjoy pink I think that's a really great combination maybe you enjoy green in which case you can add in say Marerua and the greens will be the focus with the pinks being the pop so that's another option maybe you're a bit more bold you like a bit more color you want a bit more oomph team it with a beautiful gold caramel wood with these colors they they all sing well together that's another option so the dominant color is this and these are your pops through uh, maybe you like a neutral but you thought the um, the Nadara was a little bit maybe a bit beigey but brownie for you or a bit light then you can team it with a gray so this is bank end and Tannehill again looks really lovely with those other colors there's so many options I'll, I'll give you two more you can go a light blue now this is kind of like a me thing I love blue and these these colors I think offset that nicely it's um, not too strong a contrast uh, the green is is a nice bolder color so that would that would be your kind of almost the dark green I mean it would almost be your pop but that's one option and if you want to stick with blue but go a bit darker uh, the other option is kaihiku which is that very denimy blue so lots and lots of choices of ways to extend this to make it into a garment kit for an adult so the first suggestion I have is that hello for my colors crop that's one option the uh, the next option I have is something called the porty pullover now this is more a classic yoke patterning so all your color work is here this is by uh, Gudrun Johnson who is a veteran of pattern design um, and yeah so again you choose whichever color is your dominant and then these colors around your yoke is, is a highlight really pretty and again reasonable range of sizes goes up to 58 inch chest and uh, this is enough to do the color work as required uh, for any of those sizes so that's another option the third option which is a little bit more simplistic um, it is still stranded but it's very very simple stranded it's it's uh, just little blocks of color is uh, embers by tin can knits and again tin can knits very well thought um, of designer good accessible patterns again great range of sizes um, it goes up to a 6xl it, it's um, unisex so there's, there's lots of options it's something that would suit almost anyone um, 
in the family I think it goes right down to kids sizes as well so great range of choices I, I don't think you'll need this much yarn to do the the yoke but you've got options um, you could probably get away with just two of these for, for quite a few options and lastly if you're not into stranded you're like no I don't want to do stranding but you still want to do a garment fear not stripes okay so um, I've suggested Lifesavers uh, by Tannis Lovely, which is a really classic raglan cardigan and then there are just stripes of color across it so again you pick your your contrast your main color and then you just stripe these however you see fit you might um, alternate you know dark green light green dark pink light pink and repeat you might mix them up whatever you want you might add other colors um, so again it's another great option for, for for using these to extend a main color to give you a garments worth of yarn and again goes up to 68 inches round so it's, it's, it's um, a fairly um, all-encompassing pattern for most people um, and this should provide you with the enough yarn to do stripes um, depending on how you want to combine them obviously um, for most of those sizes so I think this can be extended really nicely for lots and lots of options and I hope you have the fun exploring what they might be okay next up is the sock uh, box. So the sock box was themed around the floral imagery of Edouard Benedictus, who was um, a Frenchman of of diverse talent. Um, but what what specifically inspired me were some uh, wonderful, vibrant what I consider very cheerful floral um, images uh, which were designed I think principally for kind of textile um, yeah textiles and I suspect maybe um, wallpapers I'm not sure but mostly textile work um, they're glorious this 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 club this particular theme you just couldn't be sad around it you just couldn't the colors just made you happy so it was it was a delight to dye these because really they were just very uplifting very fun um, so I really enjoyed putting this one together so there are two skeins of sock in this uh, box one of them is a semi solid this uh, lovely what this is what I consider a very summer color it's the color of water it's the color of the sky it's the color of the air uh, if you've been to the South Island this is the color of um, the lakes you get in central Otago this is um, that's that sort of copper sulfate type um, color that seems to get washed down into lakes um, yeah it's, it's it's a kind of very New Zealand watercolor to me um, and so I love it it's, it's, a, it's a again it's a really cool summery breezy color it just it screams summer to me so this is the semi solid and then combined that with that is this multi colored yarn which has a touch of this shade in it um, sort of just through it but as otherwise as pinks and corals and reds with little touches of um, like gold and little touches of greens just little bits and pieces of other colors so these are inspired this one image in particular that really inspired these two uh, yarns um, and I that I also printed that on the little uh, sticker that was the seal for the box and of course you get the extras of those in your box um, and it's it's just it's this lovely floral image it's it's really it's it's very happy making it's it's very cheerful uh, so those are your yarns and we'll come to suggestions for those in a second also in the box um, because this is a happy bright box you get the brightest color of the soak possible so this is pineapple grove which I think is my favorite soak scent it, it if you like the smell of pineapple this smells like pineapple it's very it's a very true pineapple smell so it's fresh and tropical and yummy and yeah I really enjoy it um, and again I just it, it goes with this because it's a very bright happy color and once again if it's not for you then uh, for in your everyday use pop it away for travel or gift it um, and it'll be much appreciated I'm sure the fudge that I thought went with this is this two-part um, Russian and chocolate the Russian red seem to sort of work with the the brighter ready shades in this particular um, theme and then you get some little extras uh, I, 
they included these little cards and they come in two designs um, again just taken from two other works of um, Edwards so lovely fun modern colors and the back side of them just says I made this for you it took ages please treat it with care hand wash in cool water or machine wash on a delicate cycle do not tumble dry lay flat to dry so they're just little care instruction labels that you can add to a gift that you have made that you are giving and that might be something you've knitted or crocheted it might be something you've sewed I think it applies to quite a, a few things so uh, you certainly don't have to limit it to uh, knit gifts and to go with those I've included some uh, little knitter safety pins this time in uh, the pure gold so in the Tannehill they were the rose gold these ones are the the gold gold so again they kind of work with the soak and they're that, that lovely summery lemony color and you can use these to attach your tags to your gifts or you keep them and use them as stitch markers and row markers and all those good things so they're just super handy and again if you've already got some of these you can never have too many in my opinion you will lose 90% of them down the side of the couch if you're like me and it's useful to have them in more than one color because sometimes you need markers to be differentiable from each other so it's nice to have a gold if you do not already have a gold so those are the wee extras obviously you get the bookmark in the calendar as well so what can we do with these well it's sock yarn right so obviously you can make socks and um two pairs of adult socks no worries what kind of socks your semi-solid colors and this is very semi-solid it is that there's different colors through it but the general impression is is very semi-solid which means it's ideal for um quite detailed socks quite textured socks quite you know lacy things things where you want to see the the texture of the fabric you want to see the lace you want to see the cables ideal for a semi-solid if you want it in a plain sock but you want it to still have great interest this is where your multicolored yarns come into play so somewhere here very variegated yarn now this is obviously all oranges but it's still very variegated so if you knit cables into this you don't see it so clearly but it looks great in a plain sock so this is my basic adult toe up sock pattern and I think a multicolored yarn looks fantastic in just a plain sock. Easy knitting, easy tally knitting, easy um, if you're out doing knit night type stuff, if you go out and knit with other people, great for that. If you're going camping and you just want a small project to take with you, great for that. Um, plain sock, easy. You don't get lost, you can knit round and round and round while you yak away and you don't forget where you are. So that would look fantastic in something like that. I have a lot of sock patterns because I used to do a lot of sock clubs and make a lot of sock patterns so if you go to the vintage pearl section of Ravelry you'll find lots of other options but what I would say is when you're working in a multicolored yarn keep it reasonably simple so another couple of options is something like this it has a very bold simple pattern so again it can carry a multicolored yarn and looks okay um, and this is another option again it's a very sort of quite simple structural pattern it has a bit of texture through it but it doesn't get too hidden by the the um the variegation in the yarn so something quite simple looks quite effective um, i have also recommended the jaywalker sock which is a really old pattern now i remember knitting it ooh, at least 15 years ago maybe a little a little bit longer and it's a a zigzag because it's increases and decreases the fabric zigzags and that looks amazing in a stripe or a multi because it, it keeps it, it makes the color undulate so that's really interesting um, so jaywalkers um, monkeys something something like that that's got movement in the fabric can look really really effective in one of these multicolors so what if I don't want to do socks no problem these are designed that they can be used together um, so you could stripe them, you could uh, do one of those wonderful shawls that has areas of sort of plain fabric and then lace fabric, so the plain could be the multi and then the lace could be the, the uh, semi-solid. You could do the body of a, a shawl in the, which is quite plain, so if it's plain stocking it or it's plain uh, garter, you could do the body in the multicolour and then you could do the lace border 
in the the um, semi solid. Um, oh, there's just so many options. I think if that's something you want to do, just go and explore and and see where those apply. Um, I, this, yeah, I can think of many, many situations where you can combine these really effectively. If you just want to use this and you don't want to do socks, then I think a little shawlette would be a lovely option. So I've given a couple of suggestions. The first one is Nephili, which is one of my patterns, which is this lovely little shawlette. With, it's very simple. It's one skein, so you will get it out of this. Um, it, you cast on up the top and then you just increase out to this lovely crescent. It's quite a long crescent shape. It's got this really bold lace on the um, edge and then it's got little beads in that as well. So what that means is it's got lovely weight to it. It, it drapes very nicely. It's a lovely little, um, I'm sitting on the deck in summer but it's just got a bit cool and I want something to cover my shoulders we shawl so great for summertime but also in winter it tucks beautifully under a coat just to, to fill in that gap where the the coat joins up and and keeps your neck beautifully warm so it's a it's an all seasons type of garment i think you'll get a lot of wear out of it you can knit it in this is knit in sock you can knit in any four ply you could also let it in lace weight if you wish to it's quite an uh, adaptable pattern so that's one suggestion or something like this. You could absolutely knit it in the multi but you might lose a bit of the punch of the the silhouette of that lace so um, yeah that would be my recommendation for that one. If you want a wee shawlette that would work in the multi maybe slightly better then this is Pippi which is another one of my pants. This is a long triangle so really long and it's all garter. It's also slightly wrinkly because it's been folded up for a while. It's all garter so there's no curling and then there's this lovely little eyelet along the top edge and then there's a slightly more involved eyelet along the two diagonal edges. So once again it's just a little thing that you can pop over your shoulders uh, if you're feeling a bit cool but also again under a coat come winter it's really lovely that that um, this shape really fills in the neckline of a coat and you just get this this little touch of lace but it's not fussy it's just it's just it's quite structural lace so you could knit this in either of these two yarns and I think it would look really effective um, so if you have a hankering for knot socks in the multi this is this is an option that you could use and again yeah one skein dead easy um, lovely Right, so that is the sock option. Let's move on. Okay, last but certainly not least, the theme was blue bookends. And what I mean by bookends is actually I mean end papers. So in books, the end paper is the paper that joins the cover to the text, the paper block inside. And um, in days gone yore they were often marbled and I don't actually believe this is true marbling I think this is a this book dates to about 1901 or something 1900, yeah, 1901 so I think this is actually printed to look like marbled paper but once upon a time these were hand made these were hand printed papers as such you lay your paper down on your marbling marbled ink which is on the a water surface and pick up the color and then it would be used in your book and it they're just beautiful they're really really beautiful um, we don't really do that these days obviously except for those who hand make books still um, so I really I really love that kind of paper um, the, there's a long history of marbling through a lot of cultures um, they all produce you know quite different um, effects um, and there are some really <clears throat> lovely examples which are blue and I love blue so I um, aimed to produce a yarn that uh, was reminiscent of some of the blues used in these these marbling images and this is what we have so you can see this was my key reference image for this particular color um, two skeins of Superstar Sport so that's a reasonable size with which to make something and we'll come back and discuss what you can make with these in a bit uh, the 
soak that you got in this kit was the blue option which is actually the scentless um, so if you are sensitive to scent or you're not sure what other scent other people might like again scentless is a great option it still does the cleaning job that we want but without making everything smell um, fruity or florally so there you get that one the fudge that fits this color of course had to be blue so it is the um, salted caramel which is by far the most favorite flavor of fudge I think or well, certainly of the fudge flavors that I gen generally provide um, so yum um, and for those of you who love Finn's fudge and want more of it it is available in supermarkets down here in the south it is um, if you can't find it locally then uh, finsfudge.co.nz and you can have it delivered straight to your door and just make sure you spell fins with two n's right and then the little extras in here what you get little the stickers that have obviously were used for sealing the box this is yet another marble design this one a darker blue and then you've got a couple of little uh, sets of note cards in two different um, marble designs um, these are just nice little sized cards and on the back they tell you what uh, where the design is from and they have a little uh, lined area hopefully see that uh, that you can write in I think these are an ideal size if you're giving someone a bunch of flowers this is the ideal size to tuck in that if you're giving them a wee gift it's it's just a nice little size we can write a wee note without having to write a novel um, and they're pretty and they're you know again they're a really nice thick cardstock they're a nice matte surface um, I find these little uh, cards quite handy just for leaving little notes for people um, in packages or yeah and, and goodies if you're delivering some Christmas goodies you can write a wee note and leave that in there so you've got two different designs good wee stack of each um, there's I don't I try very hard not to include any more plastic than I need to in these packages so all of these little bundles of things that I've been holding up are generally just secured with a rubber band because rubber bands are biodegradable um, so hopefully sometimes the rubber bands fail that is the one problem with rubber bands is their lifespan is limited but everything should just be bundled together with wee rubber bands um, to avoid using plastic or excess paper and whatnot and in this theme you got little silver markers um, because well because I just thought the silver went prettier with blue than any of the other options really um, and there was some nice lighter shades through here so just picking up on that on that uh, light with blue theme and again um, in this instance I haven't given you anything that you would use the pins with so in this case they go into your little toolbox to use as markers in your knitting okay so what are you going to make with these two beauties lots of options um, I did actually release a couple of suggestions before we even close club off um, the first one of those was fancy fingerless gloves which are these gloriously um, cable textured fingerless gloves and the, the sample is basically in this color and they just look amazing and there's a lot of interest a lot of interesting knitting there they'd just be stunning stunning with like your black winter coat um, and yeah yeah they're just they're just so pretty and I think they would really do this justice so that's one option uh, the other option I already released via social media previously was something called the Mila cowl which is a lovely um, quite simple lace cowl again beautiful next to skin soft yarn you know silk and, and merino and polworth beautiful here lovely drape because of the silk so that this pattern would sit beautifully in this yarn I think so another excellent option uh, while we're on cowls uh, this Kate Davies design one she calls cowl cowl c-o-w-a-l um, again texture not lace this time back to sort of cables and things um, but again a big snuggly proper you know like it's not a skimpy cowl this is something that's really going to keep you warm you tuck it under your winter coat and just yeah just snuggly just glorious so that's another option there if you don't want to do a um, adult item um, how about a little baby knit so this multi flora baby set by Anby Hansen has just the cutest little raglan cardigan in it um, with a little bit of lace all over just like little um, almost like broderie anglaise 
Uh, and then there's a little um, uh, bonnet. And I think there's, is there uh, mitten, um, booties as well? There might be. Glorious. Um, you won't get the larger sizes out of just the two skeins. Or you might get the um, cardigan, but you won't get all the extras. Um, but again, beautiful. The only thing I will say is this yarn needs to be hand washed. So uh, maybe not the best choice for a, a, a new parent who um, it doesn't have the facilities or knowledge or time to do that. Um, but you can always offer to wash it yourself and return it to them. Um, so yeah, just, just be wary about um, shrinkage if if people are prone to putting everything in the washing machine they, they will need to be hand washed and the last um, option I've given to you is yet another cowl just because oh, I mean why not <laughs> um, this one and I'm going to butcher the name of this I think it's a learner which is a years old fatigue pattern it's a really again generous squishy cowl and wonderful simple textures like a Gansey pattern textures you know knit and pearl so not not complicated cables or anything uh, or lace just a, a lovely simple texture which again this will look great in so if you just want a fairly simple knit but with interest I think that's a good option we wear in this household we wear um, beanies made out of uh, this as our kind of bog standard winter hat we both I think have about two each um, it's fantastic for that uh, so you you get a, a couple of beanies. Um, I my most worn winter jerseys in this last year are made out of sport. Um, it's a wonderful in between yarn. I exist inside most of winter, um, and I exist inside in a fairly well heated house. Um, so I don't really need a big heavy knit. It's nice to have a, a, a double knit jersey when I'm going out into the garden. Um, but I tend to heat up too much uh, if I wear that inside. So I actually really enjoy sport as my winter weight yarn. Um, you know, down here in Dunedin it does get reasonably cold. Uh, so, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's absolutely a good insulator against the cold, but it isn't it isn't impractically warm um, in more milder climates so um, yeah it's it's a good it's a good in-between option um, and I hope you can find something wonderful that appeals to you to make from it if you want to extend the yarn I do have a couple of pop suggestions to go with it so I think it looks amazing with Messier 83 as a pop. So, I mean, who doesn't love gold with blue? Fantastic. Um, or if you prefer um, something really, really poppy with it, Draco, the hot, hot pink, pinky purple with the blue, also fantastic. This is very much my kind of color. Um, if, if you prefer more autumn tones, you might prefer the gold. But you can certainly extend this color with something else. Uh, it goes with almost everything. So almost everything in the sports stable at the moment goes with this. You can use a, the darker teal with it. Uh, you can use a pale gray with it. Um, greens, everything. Almost everything goes. But if you want just a couple of suggestions that really, really contrast and pop with this, it's the Draco or the Messier 83. So lots of options to extend this out and make something even larger with it. Okay, so three boxes done. Uh, I hope that was uh, interesting to you. Just remember that all the links are down below so you can go and visit those all on Ravelry and add them to your favorites or queue or whatever or use them as a jumping off point for finding something that suits your aesthetic um, uh, better. I hope that you um, enjoyed looking through everything and I hope that if you have a club that you have really enjoyed opening it um, and that it's it's uh, it's brought a little bit of fun to your knitting life this uh, holiday season. I hope that uh, you're having a relaxing time. Some of you will be working over the holiday season so that the rest of us can have a break. Oh, so grateful, so grateful to the people who do that. Um, and I, but I do hope that you have a little bit of time scheduled off for some um, relaxation before too long. Uh, I hope that you have a wonderful new year and I hope that 2023 brings us positive things. <laughs> I hope that life gets a little bit easier. Um, 
Uh, but but whatever happens, um, may you find joy in your everyday life. Okay, see ya.